three, two, one, roll the footage. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Simon Severino, your host. My guest today has shared the musical stage with His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, for the past 25 years, prompting His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, to state the emotion induced by Michael Fritz Patrick's music is so powerful, it seems almost verbalized. His sound is clear light. We will go today into music the power of music to healing people and healing the planet. Welcome everybody, Michael Fritz-Patrick. Great to be here, Simon. So cool to have you here. What, Thank you. What's your story with music? When did you fall in love? <laughs> well, when I fell in love is different than when I started. Mm. Um, I started when I was 10 and you know, when you're a kid, you sort of you know, you kind of take to it. And I had a, um, I would say an aptitude because my grandmother Rose, who's originally, her, her family was from Poland originally. She at age four just started playing the piano, sort of like Mozart. She had a, a just a genius for it. Um, so it was sort of in the family line. Um, but when I was 17, I had Probably the best way to describe it is when, when the athletes in sports talk about going into the zone for the first time. I, I went into the zone and time slowed down. Um, the sound got much more vivid. All of my bodily senses, like they, they turned on in a way I'd never experienced before. And I felt the audience as just one giant being like kind of like in the ocean and all the seaweed was going or flocks of birds that fly in those, you know, however that happens, we don't know. Um, so once that happened, I realized, okay, I want to do this because, because the feeling of going into the zone was so powerful. Um, but the distinction was that I heard the sound of the cello change and it went from a, a normal sound almost to something that had a, a shimmering rainbow of colors, much more um, 360 degrees. So I thought, well, if that changed the sound um, and it was so powerful to me, then I want to share that. And in order to share it, I can't be sitting in an orchestra where I'm blended in with everything else. And right? I have to find a way to make that sound available. And so many years passed, I tried lots of different things played in rock bands and Greek bazooki bands and ragtime orchestras. And finally, when I met the Dalai Lama, um, I could tell he was in the zone. <laughs> he is. There was no question. <laughs> he is so much all the time. And um, right. I wonder how many people listening right now would describe what they do when I ask them, hey, What's your story with what you do? Like most people listening mm -hmm. are CEOs right now. They run small businesses, medium-sized oh, businesses. Okay. And I wonder okay. how many of us can describe that. Like, why am I doing it? The centeredness, the openness of the senses, the point when you right. feel you are in the center of what you are here to do, mm -hmm. right? And the magic yeah. and the expansion of that and mm -hmm. the connectedness of that. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. Yeah. How you described that was a little masterclass in you know, describing what you're here to do and, and how, how it feels mm. when you find that, that spot. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have heard you describing what your intention is behind mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. can you unpack that? What is your intention when you play? Sure. Well, again, it goes back to that point of origin at age 17. I, it, it felt without question, right? There was no doubt in my mind that what I was experiencing as the music was sort of pouring into me and flowing out of me, that the audience was feeling that, right? It felt like electrical current, or you've seen that photo of Tesla sitting reading a book next to that 
giant, powerful generator thing that's putting out all this voltage, and he's perfectly calm, right? Um, so my intention really from that point forward was to be able to replicate the experience, okay? But the next performance I gave, I didn't have that experience. So I thought, I have to find a way that I can produce that no matter what the conditions are. Right? So I sort of created a training program that principally involved two things, nature and silence. Right? And the more I found I was able to get myself silent in my mind and also tune into almost to create a zone of silence. And it seemed like going into nature, first of all, it got me away from the loud sounds of the world. But second, then I was able to hear the sounds of nature, which birds have their own rhythm, but the wind has its own rhythm, the sound of the leaves. And so I spent 40 years doing my best, and I'm not really a very good meditator. I'd sort of float off, and but I start thinking about design, right? And I've used that in the music production stuff that I do uh, as much as in the performance. But the intention is to transmit that feeling, that vibration, which if I had to describe it, it would be a combination of compassion, love, and something like light, but like a luminous, like a luminous light, right? Transmit that to you, the listener, so that you can experience what I'm experiencing, which feels like something is happening at the deep, deep, deep level in the cells, at the cellular level. And in that cellular place, there are these, what I believe are these dormant switches. And when the sound hits those dormant switches, the sound turns them on and turns the cells into light. And then they get this luminous experience at the cellular level. And then those cells turn on all the other switches in our body. So the listener gets that same turned on feeling. Remember when the Beatles says, we'd love to turn you on. That's what I interpret them to mean. I guess, I guess different interpretations would be possible of that, but I love this one. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, what you're describing is every high performer has this problem, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in the zone sometimes, but I need to be in peak state in that specific moment when I don't feel like it, when I don't want it. I just had stress with my kids mm -hmm. and right now I should be in the zone. Uh -huh. How do you do that, you know, be before the performance? So there is the before before, that's your what? training program. <laughs> that's right. And what about one hour before, 10 minutes before? Usually at that point, I'm, I'm on the edge. I, sometimes I'm edgy. I don't like being in conversation. It's not nervous, but it's like hyper-focused, but, but edgy, right? But I'm on the edge, and at the edge, there's a threshold that when you step onto the stage, it's like this invisible curtain opens, right? Then what I do is once I get, these are classical performances. The, the more rock ones, it's slightly different, right? But for the classical ones, I come out, I sit down, and I immediately close my eyes, and I put myself into that same place that I was in in nature to the best of my ability, right? At that point, there's one reality. Uh, Miles Davis had a great story. He was up on stage with a new young kid in his band, and it's not going well, right? And the audience is starting to boo them, right? And the kid is panicking. He doesn't know what to do. And Miles turns to him and he says, there are two vibes, the vibe out there and the vibe up here, right? And he, he basically said, you just change the channel, right? So I changed the channel by using the silence to signal to the audience, oh, something's about to happen. Otherwise, if I just start in the audiences, you know, they're shifting around and looking at their program and they're checking their text for the, 
So I will not start. I will refuse to start until it's so silent that you can hear the pin drop. At that point, the audience is unified. I'm unified with them. And then, then we go on the journey. I love this. And mm -hmm. there is a vibe out there. There's a, there's a vibe in here. And we are responsible to tune into the, the vibe we want to hold mm -hmm. space for, right? Totally. That's it. Yeah. I, this is so applicable to everyday situation. Like my kids go crazy. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Do I turn into that vibe or can I be the calm vibe? Right. <laughs> I want to hear everything about your work 25 years with the Dalai Lama, but right now for you, mm -hmm. it's normal for people listening to it is, oh my God, it's the biggest dream of my world. How, how, how did they do it? So I want to go back 25 years ago, your okay. first encounter. How the heck did that happen? But first one word from our sponsors. What if your business would run well, even when you are on vacation? Discover how 1,600 business owners have regained their freedom using the Strategy Sprint's blueprints. How they enjoy living their dream and watching their business scale. Get the exact checklists they use to go from stressed to fulfilled using the Strategy Sprint's method. Order your copy of Strategy Sprint's 12 Ways to Accelerate Growth for an Agile Business on Amazon today. And if you love it, leave us a review. For more information, head over to strategiesprints.com. How did that first encounter happen? <laughs> it was right place at the right time. I was living in Chicago. I was trying to get to Hollywood with my rock and roll dreams. And I had a dream, but not quite a plan. <laughs> And I didn't really know the difference back then. I would have been 29. So I had to kind of re I had to, I had to go back and, and regroup. I grew up in Kentucky, which is a very interesting energy place. It's a very, uh, Lexington, Kentucky is where the world's most famous horse farms are great basketball, the bourbon, right? It's a very, you can feel the energy there, right? So I moved back into my parents' home. I was up on the third floor in the, in the turret tower and I had all my instruments and I'm trying now to come up with a plan. And I got a phone call one day from a friend of mine um, who grew up, there's a very famous monastery in, in um, Kentucky, about two hours from where I lived. And there was a famous monk named Thomas Merton, who was a Catholic monk who had lived there and he wrote books that influenced the Kennedys, Martin Luther King, uh, peace activists. He was as famous then as the Dalai Lama is now. Okay. And this friend of mine told me, he said, I hear the Dalai Lama is coming to the monastery because he was friends with Thomas Merton in 1968. And they had made big plans to, to bring East and West together. And then Merton gets electrocuted in this freak accident in Bangkok, Thailand. So the Dalai Lama had made this pledge. He was going to fulfill Merton's wish to bring humanity together, however they could, and become more compassionate. Right? So that I, they say that the Dalai Lama is coming to spend six days. And I'm thinking, this is obviously why I came back to Kentucky. I just didn't know it till this moment. So I say to my friend, I said, get me in. And he said, what do you mean? I said, get me in. He says, I, how? I said, they're going to need music. Right? And he said, they are. I said, yes. I said, they don't know that yet, but you are going to convince them. <laughs> Pause so, right here. Everybody listening. <laughs> this is how you meet your big dream. This is how you go from dream to manifestation. You ask your friend, do it. They will need this. Right. And he thought, well, I'll try. And I was like, okay, that's all I needed to hear. So he made a phone call. He called me back. It might've been, I'm not sure, not more than a few days. 
and he said, you have an opening. They want to meet you. They want to hear you play. Um, you know, he said, I gave them their credentials and they said, it all sounds great. So I went and I played for, there was a planning commission that had members of the Vatican and members of the Dalai Lama's team. It was a whole foreign world. I knew nothing about this reality. And this is 1996. So the Dalai Lama's fame, if you will, hadn't gotten to the place when Hollywood sort of took it on and all that. So I went and I, I passed the audition. <laughs> and then what I thought was going to be maybe one or two sort of background performances of people were shuffling in or uh, eating their meals and I would be back there playing along and no one would be really listening. It turned out to be nine performances over the six days in the heart, in the center of the whole thing. So when the Dalai Lama came in for the very first day, I'll never forget this. He was walking so low. He was lower than any of the, of the people that were sort of bowing to him. And then he spoke and I, I could feel his energy and it felt identical to that experience I had when I was 17 years old. It was a match and it was the first time I'd ever seen that in a, in a human being or felt that. Right? So I was like, wow, this guy is, he's totally there. Like, he's not trying to get there. <laughs> That's where he is. So as I started to play, I felt him in my mind. I felt him in my heart. I felt him in my soul. And I felt him in the universe. Right? It was that expansive and total. And after six days of this, it 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 changed me. Per, I I think permanently, right? Because now I had another reference point beyond what I had experienced. Um, and then the same thing: could I replicate it, right, on my own? And fortunately, what happened is another year went by and I got a phone call. Could you join the Dalai Lama in Bloomington, Indiana? Yes, is the answer. <laughs> so the first time there was a clarity and, um, and the courage to ask your friend, there was also the clarity that this is what the moment needs and it's good for the moment and for the That's people. Right. Yes. So there was already a preparation in you, in uh, the dream, but also the practice, right, of <clears throat> delivering that energy and holding that space. Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking many, many clients ask us, oh, one of my goals, I want to be on Oprah this year. And then, and then we go, you don't want to be on Oprah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and they go, what? It's my big dream. Yeah. And because it's your dream, you're not ready. So you want to be on Oprah? Uh, Can you hold that energy right now? Then you are ready for Oprah. Right. But you right. better be ready when you are on that stage. Otherwise, the stage will crush you. Exactly. And so what you are saying about His Holiness is he's not wanting to be there. He is there. Mm -hmm. That's mm. the difference, right? And you totally. were preparing for a moment and you were ready and you delivered nine times in six days which not everybody can mm -hmm. deliver. And so you were ready to hold that space. And that was a continuation then 25 years of that mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. makes me think, uh, might it be smart to just stop trying to get anywhere, stop trying to be anything and instead working on holding the energy intensity that we want to be holding or that we are meant to be holding? Mm -hmm. Totally, because the universe is very intelligent. <laughs> it knows much more than we know. And that gets proven when we have these extraordinary coincidences. You're, you're you know, in Rome at, the, at some museum and you.
the charm of live TV. <laughs> I, we cannot hear you. We hope you come back soon. And um, Michael Fitzpatrick, everybody, this is an incredible story of the first encounter with the Dalai Lama and um, what the preparation was, a dream without a plan. Then the moment comes, he uses that moment. Oh, oh you're back. I'm back. I apologize. I'm I'm in a we were in Rome with you. We were until Rome with you. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And then somebody that you haven't seen in 20 years from California suddenly appears. And you bump into them literally. Uh, I watched that happen yesterday. I, I'm currently in a place called Mammoth Cave where we did this recording with Tibetan monks and Trappist monks and musicians that was all an emanation, if you will, of the time that Thomas Merton and the Dalai Lama had met, and then my experiences. And when you go into the to the womb of the earth, you realize you're like an ant. Right? It's easy on the surface. You're like, oh, I'm a human being, and I drive my car, and I have Zoom things, and I'm building my company. And then when you go into the earth, you realize, oh, the interior of the earth changes your orientation so we're waiting to go in i'm there with a bunch of people from you know across the country tourists that have come to experience this and i was you know you sort of observe who the group is you you, you notice people so i watched for 20 minutes before we went in and then right before we went down the steps i see this one guy turn to the guy in front of him and say oh my god John, you know, we haven't seen each other since junior high. This is incredible. They had a moment. Right? I watched them have that impossible reconnection. Um, so to your point, if we can stay in that in the zone space, that allows all of the other particles that we're trying to attract, right? To go on Oprah or to, to launch the new book or whatever. It allows the universe to essentially bring those elements to you because you're the magnet, right? Because you're still, and you go from your surface mind, which is busy as, it, as we think it's supposed to be busy into a deeper mind that's actually coming from the heart, which is much more calm. And they've done studies that prove that the heart can generate more energy than mental thought. Not what we learn in, in Western um, upbringing. Right? Yeah, it's funny. There was a tradition in the West uh, mm. that, that had a more holistic mm. view. And at some mm -hmm. point around Athens takes over the, the Platonic school right. takes over. Plato starts rewriting in his view and, uh, you know, reusing stuff. And now we have mm -hmm. the Plato logical um, yeah. history. But really, the teacher of Plato was Parmenides. And Parmenides um, mm -hmm. was a very holistic thing. They, mm -hmm. they would lie down overnight, lie down in dark caves in the earth and what? they would call it what? incubation and that's a way of celebrating the apollo the sun god but it was really being receptive ah. and open mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. connecting to something bigger and then coming mm -hmm. out of the cave and go all right now we do this perfect yeah i did not know that it's hidden uh but it's yeah, there it's, right. it's part of our history but of course then Athens took over, and then now one part is more prominent than the other, but we are more than that. Mm -hmm. I love it. And um, you have something coming up, a launch right now. I want to hear everything about it. What are you cooking? Well, it's cooking me, I'm pretty clear. But it's called Omni Omni Sonics. But we decided to spell Sonics with an X as a, as a reference to Jimi Hendrix. Oh, <laughs> da -da 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 -da. right. Yeah, and it's so cool that he spelled his name with an X at the end, right? So we went with Omni, 
obviously all, but also OM, O-M, and then Sonics, so that it has a it has a, a very interesting visual look, right? Just the letters have a visual look. Yeah. What is it? It's music for the healing journey. Which healing journey? And what music? And what happened was I was invited by a friend of mine who has launched the first psychotropic clinical studies company in the world. It's called MindMed. If you go to mindmed.co. And so they figured out a way to essentially synthesize the psilocybin mushroom in a way that it could be determined to the micro dose. Mm -hmm. So he says to me, would you be interested in creating any uh, some music for this? And I said, well, help me understand more what happens. And he said, well, the patient comes into the clinic. There's a clinician who then is with them for what is an eight hour healing journey. And what they've proven, I'm sure you know, in, in these studies is that this application helps with brain trauma, um, uh, brain injury, mental health, grief, trauma, anxiety, all the things that people in the world right now are experiencing for a bunch of really challenging reasons. So I thought, boy, this, this applies to more than just the psychotropic setting. This applies to humanity. So I thought, boy, this sounds fascinating. And I said, well, what kind of music do you think would be appropriate for this? And he said, trippy music. And I'm like, yeah, okay, <laughs> I got <gotcha."> you. <laughs> so he said, I'd like you to create an eight hour suite. Right. And I thought, man, that's an interesting challenge. And I thought, okay, who would I ask to collaborate with me? And then what you were describing, I just sat very still and I waited almost sometimes I can get, you get like a, a visual impression. It's almost like Star Trek on the holodeck, right? You see that the character suddenly shows up. And so I made a list of my musicians that I wanted. I called them up. Some of them I hadn't seen in 30 years, but I knew that they had the vibe. Right? And I said, would you be interested in doing this? And each, every one of them said, I'd love to do it. Right? So I literally just came out of the recording studio of the first 10 sessions. We did over three days, three different musicians. And the whole purpose of this is very much in alignment with what I was describing from age 17. It's to transmit the actual vibration of, of peace or peacefulness, peaceful calm, compassionate vibration. It's almost like, hmm, there's a specific vibration that compassion oscillates at. And how do you know it? Because you, you feel your heart shift. You actually can feel the, the energy. It feels like there's, there's gold, like luminous gold comes into you. So I knew as long as I held that state in my sort of sphere, in my aura sphere, that the guys in the sessions, they had no chance. They had no choice other than to come into it. Right? This is what I've been developing. It's sort of like my E equals MC squared, right? And not only did they come into it, they transcended it. They took it. I mean, I've never heard anything like this in my life. What we didn't know was, were we supposed to create music that was sort of typical kind of ambient background, not all that interesting, but very pleasant, mm -hmm. or were we supposed to go where the music was taking us? And it became clear from the beginning that the universe had something different in mind. It had a, a, a complex, although it was calm, a very complex algorithm that, that played us. That's what it felt like. So the intention of Omnisonics is soon I will be able to send you a music file, an MP3, 
right, that you can download and you can sit exactly where you're sitting right now. Probably you want to like tune in and close your eyes and you can go on, you could go on an eight hour journey, which is an awfully long time, or we're going to, we're going to mix it down where you can go on a 30 minute journey or a 15 minute journey or an hour journey. Okay. And each one of those journeys is going to be unique and as distinct as the different books on your bookshelf, right? Each one of them has different cover art, different titles. And when you read the book, it takes you in a different place. So that's the purpose of Omnisonics music for the healing journey. Omnisonics, you got me at Hendrix. Where can I buy it? Is it well, iTunes, give me something else? Soon, give me six months. That's the, the target is to have it ready for launch. Now, what the other thing that we did, which I didn't realize, was we did the rec first recordings. We've just had the, the spring equinox. Again, O and X, yeah. <laughs> oh, the fun of live TV, we lost you again. Okay. I, are you are you using the, yeah, the Starlink? That. that happens with Starlink sometimes, they disconnect, no? No, I'm in a, I'm proud to say I'm in, the, in, a, in a hotel in Cave City. <laughs> I'm not in my studio. So I'm dependent on another another system, but it's it's holding pretty well. Um, so we may choose to. We, I don't know if you heard, but I said we we recorded this on the on the spring equinox here in yeah. the states. Yeah. And which is nice because now we know exactly where the Earth is in relation to the sun. Yes. Right? So we're we're using nature. And it's again, again. old X. Yeah. Oh, very good. I hadn't caught that. Um, so it would, might make sense that we release it on the fall equinox, September 21st. That will give me time because what I have to do when I get back to the studio after the tour is I have to listen to all of this and then let it tell me right, what the sequence is for the eight hour journey, for the one hour journey, for the 30 minute, for the 15 minutes, possibly even the five minute one, right? Because what we, what we heard coming through were, it was almost like a periodic table or the I Ching or certain vitamins that you know if you take vitamin D3, it will replicate what the sunlight does for you. Certain sounds that would immediately, kind of like when you started your show and you had that, that metal going, that was really awesome. Right? We, we heard stuff that would be good. Like if you first sat down and you had a terribly busy day and all kinds of things were going on, something that would start with a very like so it would immediately bring you down to a place where you were calm and chill and then start to take you i love this omnisonics everybody but we have to wait so where can we buy right now your music, your magic. Yeah. Where do we find it? The, the simplest thing to do, two places. You can go to michaelfitzpatrick.com. That's easy. And there's there are links to particularly to some videos that have the music with them. That's all free. If you want to hear the CD we did with the Dalai Lama, which is called Compassion, Special Message from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, you can go to iTunes and you can buy it. Um, the only difference with it is I don't know how iTunes, the way we created Compassion, our model was Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon because we wanted something that didn't have any interruptions. Each song and track blended into the next one. So if you get it from iTunes, keep that in mind. It's 53 minutes. It's designed to be listened to like a movie for the ears. Right? It, it doesn't make sense until you listen to the whole thing all the way through. There are little secret twists and turns, there are trap doors, there are catapults, <laughs> spoken word, yeah. It, this is so beautiful. MichaelFitzpatrick.com, everybody. We will jump there right now. And awesome. what's your favorite Jimi Hendrix song? Little Wing. And your favorite Johann Sebastian Bach? 
I'm not supposed to say this because I'm a cello player, so I'm supposed to say all of the Bach cello suites, right? But those, I'm, my favorite is um, his Toccata and Fugue and, and the B minor mass. But when you listen to the B minor mass, when you listen to the Toccata and Fugue, you realize this is a powerful guy. This is a powerful force of nature. This is not pleasant, you know, cocktail party music. And what happens more often than not is the is the other cellists in the world, and there are other cellists. <laughs> I've heard great ones. Yeah, I mean, that can play at at crazy levels, right? They tend to forget why I don't know that Bach wrote the Toccata and Fugue. He wrote the B minor Mass. I mean, this is like Beethoven's Ninth Symphony back then. But then they play the Bach. The cello suites, very too pleasantly for my ear. So when I like to play those the cello suites, I like to basically play them like Hendrix. Wow, Bach like Hendrix. <laughs> right. We have to hear this. We go to your website and we have to hear. Right on. Yeah. Is there? What, what are what are three favorite songs that you you are listening these days of other people? Yeah, I went to hear Genesis at Madison Square Garden on my birthday, and they completely blew my mind. I mean, completely. So that was December. It's now late March, and over and over on my repeat, I play um, Afterglow. Genesis. I play Carpet Crawlers. And then that's with Phil Collins. And then there was one album called Calling All Stations that Phil Collins is not part of the group at that point. And the song Calling All Stations. It's epic. Wow. All three of those are just, they're masterpieces. Yeah. Thank you for all of this, for sharing your journey, your wisdom, your energy yeah. with us. You're welcome. And, um, You're welcome. Man. Thank you. Everybody, you find Michael Fitzpatrick at michaelfitzpatrick.com. And um, is there a specific show, social media where you hang out? A little bit on Facebook. I tend my fan page, I don't pay much attention to. You can find me just, um, well, you could hopefully find me just Michael Fitzpatrick on my, my regular page where I, I pretty much use that to populate stuff. Eventually I'll get on to back onto Twitter and Instagram and all those other things, but I didn't want those distractions. Right? It's kind of like not going on Oprah. I, I just thought I'm not trying to push anything right now. When Omnisonics comes out, then I'll do, I'll bundle all of that stuff and there'll be a website and it'll be on iTunes and it'll be on all those pages and all that stuff. But that's when the, the, the product is ready. Yeah. Do you think in seasons, like most times, you are receiving and then when it's done, you go into a different, different mode? Yeah, it's, it's a, there's a producer mindset, a producer hat, there's a director mindset and hat, and then there's, the, then there's a performer mindset and hat, and then there's the, the creative. All right, let's get you back, buddy. The Wi-Fi doesn't want to work with us so well today. MichaelFitzpatrick.com, everybody. Omnisonics is the album we, we are waiting for. We can get it in six months, but right now you can get everything on um, MichaelFitzpatrick.com. Thank you so much, Michael, for being here. And uh, please keep rolling. What if your business would run well even when you are on vacation? Discover how 1,600 business owners have regained their freedom using the Strategy Sprint's blueprints. How they enjoy living their dream and watching their business scale. Get the exact checklists they use to go from stressed to fulfilled using the Strategy Sprint's method. 
Order your copy of Strategy Sprints 12 Ways to Accelerate Growth for an Agile Business on Amazon today. And if you love it, leave us a review. For more information, head over to strategysprints.com. No, 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 no.